Hello everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays in the Real World. Today I am looking at Sony's new handheld device, the PlayStation Vita. And by new, I actually mean kind of old because it's a few years old, but I just recently got one and I was mm, surprised by the thing, both good and bad surprised. But before I get to that, let's take a look at what we get obviously we have the box which as you can see i have the wi-fi version and it's the borderlands 2 edition so basically what i get i get the game voucher which means i have to download it and an 8 gig memory card so i get borderlands 2 with an 8 gig memory card now this isn't just borderlands 2 though i was quite surprised when i put in the code it started downloading like six or seven different things it's borderlands 2 plus all of the dlc which i was just blown away by that they would do that i was quite quite impressed with the thing it is yeah <laughs> i'm going to say this many 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 times but sony was thinking when they built this thing and uh yeah so that i'm quite impressed by is there anything really interesting on this over 900 games available for download through PSN. And you will note that it actually says that on the box, not taking into account how many physical games there are. There's a reason for that. Ah, stream a range of PS4 titles to the PlayStation Vita system with remote play. That is something I will get to later. Game with dual analog sticks for precision control. Uh, yeah, so you can do twin stick shooters like Binding of Isaac. Uh, anything else really interesting on the box itself? No, not really. Put the box down. So what do you get in the box? Well, you get a pile of manuals, a pile of paperwork anyways. So this is the AR cards. So like augmented reality cards like the uh, 3DS did. Yeah, about that useful. The AR play cards. I don't give a crap about that. We got a safety guide. It's a portable gaming console. How s much more safe could it be? We got the Borderlands 2 code. Ah, full game plus six Borderlands 2 add-ons, uh, which I don't believe they actually said on the box, so this is a pleasant surprise in the box. We have the Quick Start Guide, which it's a game console. How hard could it be? And then we have the Quick Start Guide in another language that I don't speak. Uh, what are you? You are the memory card little guide thing. It's the in, little tiny itty bitty instruction manual for the little tiny itty bitty memory card. Yeah, I'm quite happy that they gave me an 8 gig card, though 8 gig's not enough. However, that's not necessarily a problem. What else do you get? Well, you get a USB cable, a micro USB cable. Thank you, Sony. <laughs> Seriously, thank you, Sony, for going with a standardized connection. Yes, okay, I know, there's a USB 3 or whatever, USB-C, that's what it's called. A new connector, USB-C, coming out here soon. But, you know what, uh, yeah. Thank you, Sony, for going with the standardized connection. They also give you this thing, which kind of confused me for a little while. You know what this is? This is one of those USB wall wart things. Basically where you plug it into the wall and it's just a USB connector. That's all it is, except that it has a standard Sony power cable that goes with it. So once it's all plugged in and connected, it actually kind of looks like the PSP charger, where you have the power cable, then you have the power brick, and then you have another cable going to the PSP itself. Not needed. I have never actually used that. I actually just pulled that out of the box today. Uh, the or the micro USB cable, I'm not actually 100% sure if this is the micro USB cable that came with the PS Vita because I was actually using that, but I think it is. Fairly sure it is anyways. Um, but yeah, you don't need this. Uh, and looking at the numbers on it, 5 volt, 1.5 amp, it's the same as 
any USB wall wart, so it's not going to charge any faster if you use this thing over a regular wall wart. So if you already have one plugged in somewhere, or if you want to use your PC to charge it, go for it. Rock on. Uh, so, and then we have the PS Vita itself, which is a very shiny thing, and like most Sony things, is a fingerprint magnet. Seriously, I have to clean this thing pretty much constantly. I think there's actually a warning in uh, Little Big Planet for the PS Vita. It's like during one of the loading screens. It says, if you're having a problem seeing the screen, it might be time to clean the screen. Because the screen is a touch screen. So it's touch sensitive. So I can touch it and it actually does stuff. The back here, this piece, is also touch sensitive. So you, as you're playing it, you can actually touch things in the back. Or if you're like me and you're holding the thing like normal, your fingers are on the touchpad. <laughs> and it screws with the game. It took me forever to figure out in Borderlands why my character kept going, huh! Every single, you know, like every minute or so. And then I realized, oh, it's because I'm touching the touchpad in the back. Okay, whatever. We have our standard triangle, square, circle, X buttons. You know, the standard PlayStation buttons. We have our dual sticks here. Uh, select and start, which are quite common. D-pad there. We have the PlayStation Home button, which does exactly what it seems. It's a PlayStation Home button. We have stereo speakers on each side. Ooh, shiny, very, very shiny and screwing with the glare. On the top, we have the volume up and volume down. Over here is the power. We have the two shoulder buttons. Not terribly surprising, though there are only two shoulder buttons due to space constrictions. And then there's this piece right here, which I thought I found something secret when I first looked at it. I'm like, ooh, what is this thing? And I opened it up, and I realized that it's the slot that holds the game. <laughs> um, I, I seriously played with the PS Vita for like a week and had completely forgotten that they actually sold physical games for the thing. Which there would be a reason for. Uh, the fi There aren't very many physical games for the PlayStation Vita. Uh, the local Best Buy that I go to had six total. And like three of them were sold out. So they had three PS Vita games for sale and three empty slots for other PS Vita games. Uh, now that I think about it, none of them were these two. Which one would think Little Big Planet would be a big thing. But uh, yeah, I picked these up at the Exchange. The Exchange had more PS Vita games, but there still weren't that many. There just aren't that many games specifically designed for the PS Vita. But again, that's not necessarily a problem. All right, so on the bottom here, we have the headphone jack. We have the micro USB charger. Again, thank you, Sony. And then this little slot here. And this little slot is for the, come on, slide out of here. Thank you. Proprietary micro SD card. Yes, I know, they probably don't call it a micro SD card, but that's what it is. It's a fucking micro SD card, but it's proprietary. So you have to buy Sony's memory card to use it. And that pissed me off when I first heard about it, because I was so excited about the PS Vita. I'm like, ooh, PS Vita, oh, that's awesome. I had a PSP, and I was so thrilled with the thing. I did have a PSP. I do have a PSP somewhere, probably behind glass in the collection. And, uh, you know, I was quite happy with the PSP. I quite enjoyed it. So I was like, ooh, they're making a new one, the PS Vita. Oh, it's a proprietary memory card. Well, screw that, because it's going to cost a fortune to get. Yeah, well, that turned out to be not a problem. Uh, on the front, which I totally didn't notice, or didn't remember, there's actually a front-facing camera. And on the back... 
there's a rear facing camera. So there's two cameras on this thing. Because I believe uh, there are two di there are two different versions of this thing. There's the Wi-Fi version, which I have, and then there's one that's built that that like actually connects to the cell towers. Now I don't know how advanced that goes. I don't know if it can actually be used as a phone. Like I think it can. I think uh, this thing he the the headphone port is one of the ones for the four prong headphone jacks for uh, headsets. So I think it can actually be used as a cell phone, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I personally don't care because my cell phone kind of has Wi-Fi tethering, so yeah, it's not something I'm terribly concerned with. But that's pretty much it for the physical of it. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's actually pretty good. I quite like it. It fits weird in my hands because my hands are quite large. Uh, as I said, as I'm playing it, I'm always hitting the back touchpad here. There are specific places where you're supposed to put your fingers, but my fingers don't quite fit there just right. So, yeah, it's, it's a constant problem for me. It might not be a constant problem for anybody else, but it's a constant problem for me. So let's turn this thing on and actually get this thing to used. Now when it first comes up, it actually has a slide to unlock function. That's this thing here that looks kind of like a folded piece of paper. You swipe down and it unlocks it. And then you get these weird M&M looking things. These are your icons and what you can do. So you can see I have Kick and Fennec, uh, Rogue Legacy, whoop, which are two of the free games that I got this month from the uh, PSN. I pay, I, I get the, the three month PSN cards and uh, with the PSN, you get two free games for each of the three consoles, PS4, PS3, and PS Vita every month. And you can keep it as long as you're a PSN subscriber, which is really cool. Uh, down here I have the games that I've actually have physical copies of. They actually show up here even if you don't have them plugged in. We have Little Big Planet, we have Mortal Kombat, uh, we have the PlayStation Store, which has a lot of demos in it, uh, and it has a lot of other things that actually make this thing worthwhile, like Final Fantasy IX and Final Fantasy VIII. The majority of Final Fantasy games are available on the PlayStation Store. Like, a lot of them are available on the PlayStation Store. Um, and Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy IX were my two favorite Final Fantasy games, so I picked them up. Uh, I refuse to give them the credit card. Like, I refuse to give Sony my credit card after the simple fact that they have no f***ing clue how to deal with network security. So I use the uh, prepaid cards. I actually have two cents left in my market because... You can buy $20 cards, but the games are $9.99. The hell. Whatever. Down here we have a few of the other things that you can do with this that I haven't... I've rearranged all my icons to make them a little bit easier. We have PS3 Remote Play. Basically, you can control the PS3 from your PS Vita. We have PS4 Link, and it's complaining my battery is low, but that's not... Yeah, the the... The battery lasts pretty good. It lasts... Uh, I haven't charged it in like a week. Haven't really had a problem. Uh, we have PS4 Link, which does two really cool things, which I'll get to later. We have a browser, which is a fairly basic browser built on top of HTML5. So it's kind of like your phone browser, like Android browsers and probably the iPhone browser. I don't think, uh, it doesn't support Flash is what I'm getting at. And I don't think the iPhone has ever supported Flash, which is fine. We have messages, uh, which are for, you know, your friends list, which I don't have anybody on my friends list. Uh, we have trophies, which is the PlayStation response to the achievements on the Xbox 360. We have friends, which I have none. We have party, which is worthless because I have no friends. Uh, and then down here, these three that you see here, the clearer bubbles, uh, they're 
folders that I created. So I can click on them and it'll expand photos, music, videos, basic media center, utilities. We have calendar, email, maps, and near, which is kind of like the uh, street pass on the 3DS. Never use it. Uh, I don't set up email on here because I don't want Sony knowing any of my information. Uh, I don't bother with calendar on here because I have a phone. Uh, and I don't bother with maps because I have a phone. It's nice that they're included in case you want to use them. I just don't. Uh, and then system, we have the welcome park, which I think is just showing you how to use the thing. We have the basic settings. We have the content manager which is really awesome, and I'll get to after I say parental controls, which, of course, I don't use. Uh, content Manager. Now, Content Manager is an amazing, amazing thing. Now, I've pointed out that this thing has an 8-gig memory card. When I downloaded Borderlands 2 and its six special things, that is almost 6-gig. That leaves 2-gig left over to do what I need. And, of course, since... Nobody, nobody ever counts storage properly. And it's a debate on who's counting storage properly or what. Uh, hard drive manufacturers, memory card manufacturers, that kind of thing. They all do it where 1,000 uh, bytes is a kilobyte. But all the operating systems, it's 1,024 bytes is a kilobyte, and then 1,024 kilobytes is a megabyte, and so on and so forth. So when you're getting into multiple gigs, uh, you're losing a considerable chunk of storage. Sony is no different. So I'm already losing a considerable chunk of my storage because they're not agreeing on how they count storage. Yeah, so fun stuff. Uh, but... That's not a problem because of the content manager. Now, the PS Vita actually has the ability to connect to the PS3, probably the PS4, though I've never played with it, and, oddly enough, a PC you install their software onto to back up stuff from the PS Vita. So if you notice, up here where I have my games, you don't see Borderlands in here. That's because I ran out of storage space and I couldn't download like Final Fantasy IX or Final Fantasy VIII. I couldn't download either of them. So what I did was I went into the content manager, copied Borderlands 2 to my PC, deleted it, and then installed the games. So what I'm going to do when I want to play Borderlands 2, and I can do this wirely or I can do this wired, which is really cool. I can either do it through the USB cable or I can do it completely wirelessly is basically copy the games that I want to move out of the way, delete them from here, copy it from my PC, or copy Borderlands 2 from my PC back to the PS Vita, and play it. And I think that is so awesome. Sony was seriously thinking when they made this thing. I'm quite, quite impressed. Really. Um... So what else fun things can we do with this thing? Well, let me ex go over one thing that I was quite disappointed with with this thing. And that is that I can crash this thing at a drop of a hat. Seriously. Little Big Planet, Mortal Kombat, they crash on loading. I'm not kidding. I've g I got Mortal Kombat to crash so hard that the PlayStation Home button doesn't work. Like, I can get Little Big Planet to crash. Like, it'll go to the loading screen, it'll act like it's loading, and it'll just sit there for, like, ever. And it'll never do anything. And you have to hit the PlayStation button, and you swipe to close out of the application, and you open it up again, and it works. Mortal Kombat, I've crashed to the point where it didn't do that. It, you couldn't hit the PlayStation Home button, you couldn't do anything, it just sat there. Complete, hard, crazy crash. However, if you press and hold the power button, apparently there is a hardware interrupt. So if you press and hold the power button, it will ask you if you want to shut down, and it will just shut down, which is really cool. Uh, like I said, Sony was thinking when they made this thing. 
And that's that's pretty, pretty awesome. And just because I fear of this thing running out of power before I finish the video, I'm going to pause here for a minute and I'm going to plug this thing in. Be right back. And just like that, we are charging. Again, thank you, Sony, for actually doing something this simple. And giving me a nice long power cable to play with. I, I, I'm quite grateful for that. Okay, so there are two th more things that I want to cover with thing this that I am just absolutely floored by. I am super, super impressed by. And I'm not 100% sure which one I should do first, but I think I'm going to go for the one that's on the screen at the moment, and that's the PS4 link. Okay, so we click on the PS4 link. We start it. And you have a choice. We have remote play, which basically I can, well, it's like, conveniently I have one of these lying around. It is this thing. Okay, so it's the Wii U gamepad. But far, far cooler. Okay, so I can take the PS4 games and play them on the PS Vita from anywhere. Okay. Now, second screen, basically, it acts like a second screen. It, it acts like the uh, Wii U gamepad when it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. But the remote play is the really cool thing. And so it has three ways of connecting to the PS4. It can connect directly to the PS4, which, of course, has the lowest possible latency. However, you have to be in really close proximity to the PS4 uh, for... Display purposes, I am quite literally sitting two feet away from my PS4 at the moment, so it will be the lowest possible latency to connect to. It can also connect over the Wi-Fi, and it can also connect over the Internet, as long as you have the port set up properly and you have it configured to, you know, the PS4 to your primary PlayStation. A little complicated, but it works. And it works shockingly well. I mean, I, uh, I have no idea how they do it as well as they do. Like, I've played with Remote Desktop. I've played with Dameware. I've played with PC Anywhere, VNC. Not VLC, VNC. I've played with all kinds of Remote Desktop applications. And the latency would be impossible to play video games on. However, somehow they do this in a way that I have connected from my office with really, really comtastic internet, and it works. It works well. I have no latency problems. I haven't had a problem with moving and it not doing it, and I'm not sure how it's done. I really am not. But the simple fact that the box... Whoop, I dropped the box. Specifically states, stream a range of PS4 titles to the PlayStation Vita would suggest that only certain games support the streaming like that with the remote play. Uh, which, hang on, this thing has two asterisks. Where are the asterisks? I don't know. There are two asterisks. Oh, there it is. PS4 and PS Vita, Vita systems should be on the same LAN. PS Vita system must have sufficiently robust Wi-Fi connection. PS4 system and games sold separately. Okay. Um, interesting. It specifically states that the system should be on the same LAN. Doesn't necessarily say they have to be, which is... Well, that would make sense considering that's how I was playing it. I was playing it over the internet. And it just says the PS Vita system must have a sufficiently robust Wi-Fi connection. Okay. I'm not sure what the limitations are. I would guess the way that this is worded, stream a range of PS4 titles, means that some PS4 titles cannot be streamed to the PlayStation Vita. However, I have yet to find one. Though I admit I have one PlayStation 4 game outside of the free ones I get with the PlayStation Network. But let's actually do that. Let's hit up Remote Play, and it searches nearby. And if it can find it, it will connect to the PS4. Now, the PS4 is already on, so it can connect right away. In fact, not only can it connect right away, 
It's loading story mode and it's 90%. For the record, I've been recording this for 25 minutes. I actually told P- or Grand Theft Auto 5 to load uh, about five minutes before I started recording. <laughs> so, yeah, it's still on 90% loading. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 takes so fucking long to load. But there we have it. We are in and playing Grand Theft Auto 5 on my PlayStation Vita. And I'm not noticing any real lag. I mean, I think... Hang on. I think there might be a slight, slight delay in the controls. But it's hard to tell. It's been a little while since I played Grand Theft Auto V. And I've always had a few problems with Grand Theft Auto V. Let's see if I can turn this thing. No, it's too shiny. Everything's showing up at the... Yeah. Anyways, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty freaking awesome. (laughs) Press over to play with Mr. Raspberry Jam. Nope, not going to do that. Not on video. (laughs) Uh, I'm, have I beaten, I think I've beaten Grand Theft Auto V in this version. I'm just playing as Trevor at the moment. But yeah, this is, this is pretty awesome that I can sit here and play Grand Theft Auto V in my hands just straight off the PS4. Now, as I said, I've already had this game loading, but what if, say, the PS4 was turned off? Well, if it's in rest mode, not like fully off, but in rest mode, um, I'm still hitting things. That's what that is. That was me switching my fingers around to hold the back and touching the back touchpad, because the back touchpad actually does stuff. Anyway, so, uh, but if it's turned off, the Vita will actually send a turn-on command to the PlayStation 4, which is really cool. Uh, let's see, PS4 system, which will go there. Uh, I believe start is options. Yep, close application. Yes, I want to close. But now I have full control over my PS4 without any problem, which, if you'll notice, this is actually a neat little glitch that I've come across Let's see if I can get you closer. Okay, so we have transistor there. And we have transistor there. But it says Apotheon. Yeah, something glitch. Those are the two games. Those are the two free games for the PS4 this time around in the uh, PlayStation Network. But something glitched during the installation of Apotheon. And now it's transistor's icon for both of them. I, I don't get it. But it plays just fine. So I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. But that is one of the cooler things that you can do with the PS4. You can just, or with the PS Vita and the PS4, is you can play the PS4 remotely. Uh, so let's enter rest mode so it'll shut itself down. And then it'll tell me the connection has been lost, which is not surprising. Swipe to close. And then the second thing that I, the last thing I want to go over that I think is really, really cool is Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy IX. They're PS1 games, and I can tell you from playing this, they are emulated PS1 games, okay? This is not uh, some remade version for the PS Vita. Totally, totally emulated. And it's so emulated that it actually has a setting. Uh, Let me pull up Final Fantasy. We'll start up Final Fantasy. Once it loads, it does take a little bit of time because we get this annoying warning. But it's loading, and it loads exactly like the PlayStation. And I love the thing. I love it so much for this thing. Come on. Come on. It actually takes loading time. Like, this thing could just be zipping through everything. But no, it actually loads at speed. It does. I'm not kidding. Come on. There we go. Okay. So, if I press and hold the home button, we get these extra settings. So, we get flight mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth features, brightness music, blah, 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 disable microphone, uh, chat for audio play. So, these look like standard settings for the PS Vita. But if I hit the settings button up here, 
it brings up actual settings. So we can see switch disks. And it it's smart enough to know that it's not asking for the disks. Boop. But it's that's how that's one way I know completely that it's emulated because I have to switch disks. Uh, we also have controller setting, because if you notice, the PlayStation 1 had two shoulder buttons, okay? And if you've ever played Final Fantasy VIII, you know that it uses all the shoulder buttons. But there's only two shoulder buttons here. Uh, but the controller settings, boop. Will it show me the controllers? Boop. No. Come on, show me the controllers. Uh, there it is. Assign rear touchpad. Okay, so you see, this is a display of the rear touchpad. So L2, R2, L3, R3. Okay, so you have to use the rear touchpad to use L2, R2. And it does not work that well. Like, you see, this taken up, you know, literally one quarter for each of the buttons. But you have to be so precise at exactly where you put it. I guess they assume that you're going to be playing like this, and you push the button, and your finger is going to go down like it's trying to squeeze the trigger, because that's the only way I've seen it to work. But it has to be so precise, and... Whoa. No, go away. But it has to be so insanely precise, and it just does not work well. And if you're trying to run away in battle in Final Fantasy VIII, it's almost impossible. But it works well enough. Now we can also assign buttons to the front touch screen. And the front touch screen, you can be a lot more detailed. So if I hit our, this button down here, I can assign any button. Unlike the rear touch screen, which only assigns the L2, R2, L3, R3. This one you can assign any button to. Boop. Which I've assigned this corner to select because in Final Fantasy VIII, to use the Guardian Force power-ups, you have to hold select and press the square button to power it up. Uh, and the select is here, and the button's here. So it's kind of hard to do. You can't do it with one thumb. So I just hold that corner and just boop, 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 done. Again, Sony was thinking when they made this thing. I really like it. Assign controllers. Oh, I see, I see. I was like, okay, I get it, I get it. That's for the PS1. Uh, switch modes, you can go the digital mode or the analog mode, which is um, the PS1, the very first incarnation of the PS1 didn't have analog sticks. And like another incarnation of the controller came out with analog sticks later on. Now the games had to be able to support both. And that's what that is, the switch mode thing, which is really, really cool. But it's really nice. Uh, the screen mode. Ooh, this is an amazing thing. Hang on. Let's get out of here. And let's get to a part of the game where you can actually see the entire screen. Because right now we got black with white text. Come on. Come on. We'll continue. Bloop. Even the memory card loading time is the same. Bloop. Come on. Not kidding when I say the loading time's the same. It's hilarious. A little bit. Okay, so you see how we have the vertical pillars here. Um, what you can do, if you press and hold, go to settings, other settings, screen mode. You have a couple different choices of screen mode. You have original, Bloop, which does this horrible, horrible letterboxing and pillar boxing mode. Normal, which kind of... I, fuck, I don't know what the hell to describe on that. Zoom, which zooms in the full screen, but you're missing the bottom and the top part. Full, which squishes it. Or you can create a custom. Now, you can literally change it just by touching and pulling it. So kind of like you're doing it with pictures, you can just... Pull, pinch, and pull, pinch, pinch, zoom. That's it. Um, I, ha I'm not doing this manual. I'm not doing this because I already have it set up the way I like it. Um, 
you can set it to key proportions. So this way and this way will be the same relative to each other. So uh, four by three is the original screen resolution. So you can tell it to key proportions. So as you're zooming, it all stays the same. I don't have that enabled because I always thought Final Fantasy VIII would look kind of squished horizontally. So I have this way pulled out a little bit more. Boop. Again, they know what they're doing. Sony, Sony was thinking when they made this thing. Uh, we also have disk load speed that you can actually change. Uh, some games do not support it. Uh, I would assume Final Fantasy VIII does not support it, considering that... Uh, uh, ooh, considering it takes just as long to load as it did on the PS1. Fast, normal, it takes the same amount of time. But, yes, I really like this thing. This is what I've been doing for like the past week when I get home from insanity at the office. I sit down and I play Final Fantasy. And as you can see from my stats, <laughs> uh, there you go. The main character is level 41, whereas everybody else is 25 and 24. Except the new character that just showed up is 11. And that's where I'm supposed to be right now. So you can tell that's kind of what I've been doing. Just having serious amounts of fun. So, yes. That is the PS Vita. It is a little handheld console that I am quite, quite impressed with. A little disappointed that Sony is... Well, I don't, I don't know if I should blame Sony for that. There aren't a lot of game, physical games for it at all. Most of the games that are on the store are older games, PlayStation games, and indie games, like small developer games. There aren't a lot of big-name games for the PlayStation Vita. It's the console big developers forgot. And I guess that's pretty much the best way to describe it. The PS Vita is turning, or, well, seems to have turned into, I don't know if this was the same at the beginning because I didn't have one, but it seems to have turned into an indie playground, which is not necessarily a bad thing. There's a lot of really good indie games out there. I, yeah, there is a Minecraft version for the PlayStation Vita as well. So, yes, I quite like the PlayStation Vita. I actually would recommend this purchase. I think it is worth the money. Uh, I picked up the Borderlands 2 package for 250 bucks. Okay, that could be a little bit much, but I don't think it's that much. Uh, it's worth the money, definitely. I quite like it, and I will see you guys in the next episode, and as always, 